Good morning, everybody. 7 a.m. mastermind call for all those who are desiring to live with the laws with Pizit and Carolyn. Welcome, everybody. So good morning, everybody. We're so excited today. We're actually coming to the end of the, uh, you know, of the 11 laws. So today we're going to go over the law of obedience and the law of success. But we'll just do a little rundown, you know, it's always good to refresh every single week. If you guys can refresh every single day, that's fantastic. Uh, make it part of your, you know, your hobby, your daily habits, just like waking up, brushing your teeth, taking a shower, just scanning through the 11 laws will always remind you and will always like set you up for an amazing day. So in order to embrace a life of success and happiness, these 11 forgotten laws need to be understood. These laws work the same for everyone at any time and at everywhere. People can live a fulfilling life, achieving what they want to achieve if they live in harmony with these laws. So there's the if. <laughs> so we started with week one with the law of thinking and the law of thinking dictates that we can only attract what we think. So we understand that the power of our thoughts or the quality of our thoughts create the quality of our life. Then we dived into the law of supply and the law of supply depicts that the universe is a source of unlimited supply. So there is no such thing as scarcity or lack. Uh, the world is abundance and there's plenty for all. We then went into the law of attraction, law of vibration, and the law of attraction essentially is about what we focus on, we will attract. So this really gets us to question, where is our focus? Then we went into the law of receiving, and the law of receiving works hand in hand with the law of giving. And we must give in order to receive. So this is all about letting go expectations. When we give something, we give it wholeheartedly without uh, any expectation. We then dived into the law of increase. And the law of increase is about being happy and being grateful for what we have now. So the more you're grateful for everything that's going on in your life, uh, it doesn't matter, you know, uh, how you perceive it. What's important is to be grateful and understanding that life is always working uh, for you and, and not against you. And then we dived into the law of compensation on week six. And this is the law that is all about space or vacuum. And this is about uh, removing things that you don't need from your life in order to make space uh, for new things to come in. So a little bit of a spring cleaning then we dived into law number seven, which was the law of non-resistance. Every thought has a frequency, and the less you resist on something, the less it will exist. So the law of non-resistance teaches us to let go, you know? Uh, when you do 100% of everything you can and things are just, you know, not going the way uh, you think they should go, it's you just let go. Then we, went, we dived into the law of forgiveness, and the law of forgiveness states that we must learn to accept our own mistakes and letting go of it completely. So we understood here that forgiveness is something that we do for ourselves. It's not something that we do for others, and it releases us uh, you know, from guilt, from shame, which kind of block uh, working with the laws. We then went into the law of sacrifice, and the law of sacrifice was to give up something that is of a lower nature for something of a higher nature. So here we understood that, you know, waking up for the mastermind <laughs> and feeding your mind and being with a group of like-minded people, uh, you were sacrificing your sleep, but so you're sacrificing something of a lower nature, the sleep, for something of a higher nature, uh, you know, um, feeding your mind and feeding your soul. And now we're going to dive into the law of obedience with Carolyn. And this law states that when we understand the laws and live in harmony with the laws in our daily life, we could achieve great success. When we obey to the laws, we are governed by nature, by nature's order, which automatically removes all the challenges and obstacles for us along the way. With the nature's order, universe will answer to us for every need that what we want. So hey, Carolyn, well, good morning, Wendy. Too. And Andrew just texted asking for the link from Amsterdam. He's joining us this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Andrew. And Wendy, welcome. This is like, this is discipline, right? Where you are in the world, you plug in. So thanks for joining us, both of you, Wendy and Andrew. So the law of obedience. Every law, every part of our life is governed by law. Whether we like it, we don't like it, we obey the laws, like the laws of the road. If you obey the laws, if you follow the laws, everything will go well for you. So which laws and, and when you choose to obey them, because not everybody choose, chooses to obey laws and then they wonder why things are not 
like things are in turmoil and, and chaotic in their life. They have to imagine that there are laws, spiritual laws really, that govern us. So to be ushered into turmoil, blindly toil a few years, and then go out into uncertainty is surely not the purpose of man's existence. Life must mean more than this, and it does mean more. Man should be a builder, and to him is given all the materials out of which to construct the kind of life he desires to have. He builds in wisdom or in ignorance, according to his obedience, according to his understanding of divine law and the use of it every day in his life. Many people, when they learn that the science of living is governed by exacting laws, immediately assume that to live rightly is to live the hard way, right? They are afraid of a law that is exacting in their demands, yet these same people would not be willing that the laws which govern human society should be modified in any way. They recognize that the laws which govern social conduct and activity must be properly enforced if organized society is to function harmoniously and safely. In other words, they recognize that government, for example, is for the good of mankind and that without it, human life and welfare would be in continuous jeopardy. If this is true of human government and established by constitution and law, it is even more true of divine government. And the more exacting the law, the more certain the safety, prosperity, and happiness of him who fulfills the law's demands, right? So in other words, there's a law of mathematics. We understand that mathematics has a law, and when you follow it, all is in order, right? There's laws in every part of our life. So when we're talking about divine law, the law of the, the universal laws, which is what we're studying here, there's no difference in our obedience to them and understanding that when we obey the laws of the universe, our life will be in harmony. Things will flow in our life. So we don't question it when it comes to government. We don't question it when it comes to other laws that are out there because we're accustomed to them. We're, we're used to them living in our world. So we don't really question the laws of the road. You know, there's laws of constitution. We know we have to obey the laws of the land, of our world. But no law is more demanding of us to obey than the laws of the universe because if we, if we obey the laws that govern us in a divine way, then our life will be exactly the way we, we want it to be. So the word obey means to submit to rule or to comply with orders or instructions. So obedience then is the governor of all movement, whether it be mechanical, literal, or spiritual. Business is founded upon obedience and in each member obeys the law of commerce, he will succeed. Right. So you can't just in business go off and do what you want and have all sorts of um, what they say here is like these wildcat schemes. And if you're not obeying certain laws of business, you're not going to succeed in business or laws that govern everything. Right. And we see in nature. Okay, Nature has no trouble following the law. There's no problem that nature can't have because nature has its own set of laws and we don't question those laws. We allow those laws to just work. So we obey these laws. Our mistakes are largely due to the fact that we have obeyed more readily the laws of earth and the laws of spirit than the universal laws. We have subjected our ideas to the outward appearance of things rather than to the inner truth that the law teaches us. Right? So this is what the, the basis of all these universal laws are. It's thinking that creates the life that we want. It's living from the inside out. And each one of these laws are all woven together to give us success, which is the law that comes right after this. Like how can you achieve success? Each one of these laws that we've learned here are all an ingredient towards success. And what this law teaches us that if you obey all of the laws that are, that are miraculous in their universal application, then you will have success. You can't not have success, it's law, right? So we have to understand that the law of spirit tells us that first we think things into existence from within before we shall see them on the without. Every law teaches us the same thing. So I guess if you wanna think in your day-to-day -day life, you have to say, which laws am I obeying today? Which laws am I, am I following and obeying the universal laws? And we reviewed what we saw, Pazit reviewed all the ones that, that we've learned up until now, but each one 
is elegantly weaving itself into all of them. So we say in the laws of nature, um, as ye sow, so shall ye reap, right? So if you plant a turnip seed, nature doesn't produce potatoes. If you plant a corn seed, nature does not make a mistake and bring forth a giant oak tree. Everything is by law. It's when we, when we, when we push up against what the laws are and we resist the things that we know we must put in our order, that's when, um, that's when we don't get the results that we want. So the purpose of the lesson is to learn how we might properly choose and serve the law for our highest good. Um, disobedience to the law is refusal to do what we know is right. We all know the right, but we do not always do it because it seems to interfere or delay our immediate attainment of the object we seek. We want quick returns, forgetting that the law moves slowly, yet it works perfectly and well. We want instantaneous healing of our diseases, but we are loath to give up the net of habits that created them. So this law can have only one result, happiness, peace, and prosperity. By obeying the universal laws, you can have nothing other than happiness, peace, and prosperity. All that is required of us is to learn obedience to the law of truth and to not obey the petty things that arise steadily as we allow our vision to be disturbed and harassed. When we obey the voice, the law, when we understand with the master statement, all that is mine is thine, this is the law acting through us. As we obey the laws, we humble our personal self to the, to the divine self within us. We refuse to accept the outer appearances of things as being final and true, but we turn within and seek that which is real and true of the law and how it was intended to be. So for me, this is like a law that reminds me. You know, when, when, th when you're looking at what's going on in, in your circumstance, you have to be reminded of, okay, which laws didn't I follow? Which laws didn't I obey here? Was I resistant to things, right? Like, how was I thinking? How was I using my thoughts? And that's your barometer. Your outside picture is the result of your inside thought. So you can tell whether or not you're obeying the law or not by your results. So this law just reminds us that to be obedient to the law is to always have happiness, peace, and prosperity. Right? Here, I'm going to unmute you. And you yeah, and sorry. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah, absolutely. I was just going to say um, that definitely it, it, this is like your roadmap. You know, this yeah. is your roadmap to success. So if, if uh, you know, I mean, your, your out picture, what's going on in your real life is just feedback. It's just feedback. And you know that with these laws, you have the power to change them. You have the power to change the direction of your life by changing the direction of your thoughts. It's not by moving to a new city. It's not by getting into a new relationship because you take the baggage, which is the baggage of thoughts. <laughs> you take them wherever you go. So when you clean up your thoughts, when you clean up the baggage in here, then your life cleans up as well. So this is why it's such a, it's so important to go in or not out. Or we were, we were conditioned to go out or, oh, we don't like this apartment, go to, you know, go to the next one thinking that it's going to bring us uh, the happiness that we're seeking or the change that we're seeking. We don't like this relationship. Let's get into a new relationship. And then you wonder, why am I attracting the same type of men? Or why am I attracting the same types of partnerships? Or why is it that I'm always, you know, at the end of the month, there's not enough uh, money, you know? And so you realize that everything has to do, you, you want to like stop for a second and say, let me take a look at my thoughts before you jump into anything new. You got to remember your thoughts are always coming with you. So what are you taking with you, you know, and what must you need to change, you know, and this is where you start taking inventory and kind of, you know, cleaning house, as we say, you know, well, it's like, you know, if you find like some people drive, drive, you know, let's say, for example, you're speeding on the highway, you know, and, and your result is you're constantly getting tickets. You're getting speeding tickets all the time. You know, you're saying, I, you know, I hate having to pay. Okay. So what law are you not obeying? Right. If you don't want the speeding tickets, obey the law, slow down. You won't get the speeding tickets, right? You have to ask yourself all the time. And this is why becoming aware of these laws and, and reminding yourself of these every day, even if it's just, you know, summarizing in your head. Okay. Like there's things that I have to, there's, there's, there's ways in which I need to conduct myself, the ways that I need to think, the ways that I need to understand how what I think produces results. 
and how I behave is going to produce certain results. People who behave in ways that are consistent and that are, are governed by the law of, of universal law, right? The law of vibration, which attracts to you or repels from you. All of these laws, if you remind yourself of them, just do a quick review, you know, the study often, then you kind of, you keep yourself in this place where you go, okay, I'm like, everything is harmonious in my life because I'm, I'm actually, I'm following these laws. I'm applying them in my life. I'm aware of them and I'm applying them. And this law just reminds us to be obedient to them. Right. And I really like uh, something very important by this law when they said, um, you know, when you plant seeds of a turnip, you're not going to get potatoes, meaning, uh, you know, as you sow, so shall you reap. So the seed, the seed is the thought. This is what is important to understand here. The seed is the thought. What thought are you thinking? Are you thinking um, a, a thought? a seed of wealth or a seed of lack? Are you thinking of seed of joy or a seed of sadness? Are you thinking a seed of, uh, you know, um, harmony or are you, uh, or are you thinking of seed of disharmony? Because whatever seed, whatever thought, seed is thought, you plant in your mind will become the out picture of your, you know, your world. It can be no other way. So yeah. now you understand that there is a connection between what's going on in here and what you're seeing out here. And that's really the most important thing. And so that's why sometimes when we go through things or sometimes even Carolyn calls me, uh, you know, and there's like something going in her life. I always ask her, well, how long do you want to stay in it? You know, yeah. I remind her like, how long do you want to stay in it? Because, the longer you stay in it, the more you will grow <laughs> more of those, you know? And that's what's so powerful about having, uh, you know, somebody that's, um, you know, in your circle, in your circle of influence, somebody in your mastermind group, somebody that you can reach out to. And you can, you can, because when we talk about these things, we don't talk about them as if they're problems. Okay. We'll just say, huh, this is going on. And then we kind of break it down. So you, you need somebody that is almost like your accountability partner that you can reflect something and they can understand the laws as well. And they can reflect back to you something that you just don't, maybe you just don't see it this moment, but you can course correct because the quicker you can course correct, the quicker that, that vibration that you've put yourself in doesn't take hold and become you. Because it's not to say that, okay, well, I, I, you know, I'm never going to kind of dip because the law of rhythm tells us that we will, okay? Like, like the, the tide goes in and it, the tide comes back out. I mean, we're going to do this. But if down here doesn't feel good, you get to choose the thoughts that bring you here. And then you get to choose how long you want to think them. Because the longer you think them, the longer it's going to take you to bounce back. It's just that simple. So how long do you want to stay there? Do you like that feeling where you are? You don't like that feeling? Change your thoughts. It has nothing to do with, well, when that changes and that happens, I'll feel better. When I have more money, I'll feel better. When I have the perfect relationship, I'll feel better. I don't like this job. I don't like this job. But when I get the best job, the better job, I'll feel better. It means that when you're in the job you're in, you're aware that it's not where you want to be. Okay, but your work now is to picture what you do want to get you to the next place, not to sit and feel how much you don't like the job, because guess what's going to happen, right? Your vibration is going to stay in that place of getting more and more of what you don't want. So if you can think of anything when you are going through your day to day, you have to be very picky what you think about and say, what is it that I want? Focus always on what you want. And if you start feeling like there's something that's in your world that you don't want, simply observe it. Don't live in it. Don't get caught in it. Observe it and then switch your thinking to, okay, well, I understand the contrast. I understand what I don't want. That's cool. Switch your thinking into what you do want and then just focus forward on what you want. And then what you don't want will just slowly disappear the new Absolutely. job will come and you have to be happy where you are, even if it's in a place that you know is not where you want to stay, but you have to feel happy there. And every single law that we have touched on tells us that when you're happy where you are, no matter where that is, you will always be happy. You will attract more things to be happy about, but we get caught up in this. I'm not where I want to be. Your vibration 
goes into a place that doesn't attract what you actually want. So your job is to always put yourself into a vibration that feels good. And that will bring you to success, which is what the next law is, right? It all right. Goes back to your success in every part of your life and obeying the laws brings you success. That's it. All these laws are meant to be navigated. So I'll take it straight into the law of success since we, you know, we're there now. So the law of success states that everyone is born to succeed. So everyone is born to succeed. There's not, it's not like you're the chosen one. Everybody has the same uh, advantage in life. We have the power and the capacity in each of us to be great and to achieve massive success. We need to properly develop it from our inner world in order to have it in our outer world. We need to work from our spiritual thoughts work from the non-visible energy to see the manifestation happen in our physical life. So in conclusion, it is important to live in harmony with the universal laws. So to ensure that we are governed to achieve great success and happiness in life. So again, this all goes to, this is an inside job because our thoughts are invisible. Uh, most of us, um, you know, have a hard time understanding that it's our thoughts that are causing our reality. I was just talking with Carolyn yesterday and I was saying, you know, uh, I've heard thoughts become things for so long. I mean, even the secret that came out, I don't know, at least like 10 years or if not more, you know, where thoughts become things. I said, I heard the words, but I didn't understand what they meant. It took me many years to understand that, oh, oh, my thoughts actually become like the out picture of my life. So if I'm thinking sadness, sadness is what I see. If I'm, uh, if I see lack, uh, you know, if I think lack, I see lack. So I started to understand that, you know, the correlation between it. And so law of success is, uh, it comes down to he can, who thinks he can. So it's really the mindset. If you think you can, you can, if you think you can't, you can't. And nobody's going to argue with you. And, and, uh, the universe is going to give you exactly what you think. So nature as our model, copy her methods and her principles and laws. We shall discover all the secrets of success. Infinite resources are at a man's disposal. So again, there are no limits to his possibilities. So uh, the only limits are the limits that we impose on ourselves or the limits that we think are limits. Uh, every, mi uh, every mind can develop greatness. It is simply a matter of knowing how. When they say knowing how is knowing how to work with the laws. And once you know that, you know, everything starts from in the invisible into the visible. Now you know how. So now it's a question of focusing and monitoring, you know, what's going in and out of your, you know, what are you thinking and what are you seeing? Um, all you need to do is gain a right understanding of these principles and laws upon which success is based and then apply the right methods of operating these cause until success is earned. So, you know, so again, the out picture is just feedback. So just like, you know, driving on a road, if you get to a dead end, what do you do? You course correct. So this teaches you that if you don't like the out picture of what's going on in your life, you just got to course correct your thoughts. It's so easy. Like you can do everything from where you are. You don't need to go anywhere. You don't need to travel anywhere. All you got to do is course correct from here. You can start writing down or, you know, definitely get a coach, a mentor, or like Carolyn says, an accountability person, because it's very hard to see. Uh, habits that you do uh, on a, if what's regular for you, what's habitual for you is so habitual that you cannot see what you're doing. You cannot see that is the paradox. You cannot see it on yourself. Uh, I'm sure many times you will find yourself like uh, in a situation where you'll be like, why did he do that? Or why did she do that? Because you see it as an observer, you're able to see somebody, somebody else's uh, doings and say, oh my God, if you would just do that, it'd be so much easier. So it's easy to see it on somebody else, but very, very hard to see it on yourself because it's habitual to you. Only when somebody brings it up, you're like, oh, I do that. <laughs> I remember sometimes somebody would tell me, oh, Pazi, you do that. And I'd be like, really, I do that? I didn't notice I did it until they brought it to my awareness. And I was like, shit, I do do that, you know? And so once it comes into awareness, am I able to change my, my, my thinking about it? So it does take somebody to bring it into awareness, to bring it into the light. Uh, uh, so we're made for advancement. The law's intention is that you shall move forward. You can stand still and you can go backwards, thus retarding your normal progress for a while, perhaps as long as a lifetime. But in the end, you will become compelled to move forward, especially in the direction of your soul's growth. So you got to trust. You're here to grow. This is what you're here to do. So don't be hard on yourself. Uh, you know, just shift your thoughts. You know, you only know what you know. When you know better, you can do better. So once you know better, you do better, you shift and let's go, you know, get back on the road. Uh, 
What you imagine to yourself as success can be reached. What she idealizes, she has the power to actualize. What she images in your mind, she has the power to produce materially. Build up your, build up your in power in success. That uh, is her plan for you. And when they say her, they say nature. Nature, this is nature's plan for you. So nature's plan for you is that whatever you can picture in your mind, you can have it in the out picture in your world. And this is a fact uh, from the work that I've done as a, as a vision photographer, I understood that if a person was able to perceive themselves in a certain level of success, once they pictured themselves as that person, they would become it. Even if they had no experience, I would have mothers who turned into actresses that never took, took an acting course in their life. Uh, I had a guy who, you know, saw himself as a, uh, as a model actor, ended up on a Super Bowl commercial, never modeled a day in his life. But just the fact that they're able to see themselves as a different identity, the person would be able to take on that identity and become it within record time. Well, so that's, whatever that's you what Dr. Joe Dispenza calls it. He says, you know, when you change your, when you change your personality, so you become the person that you imagine yourself to be, your personal reality changes. Absolutely. So we no longer, we're no longer waiting uh, for things on the outside to change so we can change. You know, we're not waiting for us to get success, to feel successful. We've, with the power of a mind, we can decide, I am successful today. We start acting aligned with success and we become success. We let success catch up to us. Yeah. We let the future catch up to us, but we create the future today. And we create it today by the thoughts and images that we hold in our mind. So this is very, very powerful to work with thoughts and images of the things that you want. And you, you, you decide today what you want, you know, today I decide that happiness, uh, I am happiness. I am wealth. Okay. I am blessed. I am joy. So you must speak those things about you today and you must act congruent with those images of how you see yourself. That is the seed that we're planting. Again, if you plant a turnip seed, you will not get potatoes. Okay? Yeah. If you plant thoughts of wealth and you see yourself as wealthy, you will not get, uh, you know. Um, you can't get anything other than what you picture. Exactly. So you, everything you picture, you'll catch up to that picture. So you have to really, <clears throat> I used to have a, when I had my, my office here in my, uh, in my condo, I used to have this big sign that said, be very picky about what you think about. It was just reminding me constantly to monitor my thoughts because I was so aware that everything that would show up for me was entirely based on how I was thinking. Now, does that mean that, oh my gosh, you have a thought and everything's going to change? No, it's the beginning of that. And the longer you stay in that thought, often when I'm working with clients in mindset, you know, I will, uh, I know where they're at. They're trying to stay here. I'm trying to move them there. There's that period in between where they will be really sure that their problem is what we need to talk about. And that's not where I want them to be. I want to change that into, okay, where are we going? What do you see for yourself? Who are you becoming? Let's let go of yesterday's news. What was in the rear view mirror? Because it doesn't matter. The more you focus on what you call a problem, what I would call like some challenge that, okay, well, we just don't pay attention to it and keep moving. When you call something a problem, well, guess what? It's a problem. That's <laughs> so right. You're going to get stuck in that thing called a problem. And then often in conversation, they go, yeah, but you don't understand. This is like this, and this is the this, and I have to figure this out. It's like, it will figure itself out. You don't want to focus on the problem. You want to focus on what you want. How do you want it to be? Forget how it is. How it is is because it's how you thought to get it here. It's past. It's already done. You've already manifested the problem. So if you want more problem, keep focusing on it and you will get exactly what you think about. You'll not move past the problem. You'll say, okay, how come things aren't changing? Well, nothing changes if nothing changes. You've got to change the way you think to be able to change your results. So if you find your mindset always moving into that place of problem, well, number one, it's a, it's a, a habitual thought. It's the way you've been trained to think. So it's not like, don't, don't take it as something where you, you know, be kind to yourself and say, listen, I didn't know better. That's the way I was trained. I was trained to always focus on what's wrong or what the problem is or what the challenge is. And, and so recognize that 
okay, I don't like the result. I'm going to change it. Then yeah. you start thinking what you want. And that's all you think about the situation, the way you want it to be. And you will achieve success. It's just, it's just law. I mean, Pazit, we could even use the example of Priya here, right? Because, you know, you and I talked about, I, I have to hire somebody. I have to hire somebody. We threw it out there. We didn't give much attention to it. We just threw it out there. I got to hire somebody. We'll throw it out here. We'll throw it out there. But then we decided we're going to find somebody, right? And the universe brought that somebody into our, into my reality. Uh, this is like hiring an assistant into my reality without my having to even work at it. Because all I thought about was, this is what I want. This is what is required in my business. And I didn't, we didn't raise a finger to get and to force it and to find somebody. Hey, somebody just found, found us. Yeah, but it's all about making a decision. So there was a decision okay. that was made. We got to a point where uh, Carolyn absolutely needed an assistant. And I said, okay, that's it. I'm going to help you find one. Like, that's it. I, we are on, I said to her, we are on a mission yeah. to finding an assistant. We're on a mission. So we did, we did what anybody would normally do. So we put ads, you know, on LinkedIn, whatever we, we are looking for somebody, but that's it. We just did what we, you know, what we could do. We did our part. We'll put an ad. We'll see what happens. Now, of course, when you work with universal laws, our mind was that we found somebody, it's, she's a per, you know, he, she is the perfect person. Everything is good. And we let go. So we put it out into the universe. We let go. And then the assistant was delivered to us in a very different way. You know, we, uh, you know, the, the stories like, it's like a bit of a loophole story. It's like where I was visiting an apartment to rent in Montreal. The, the apartment was in right. We were in a place. We went for, for lunch. We couldn't decide on a place for lunch. Anyways, brought us to one specific place. We ended up going to a specific place and ended up meeting one of my clients who we just found out, uh, you know, is freelancing as a, the exact, uh, as an assistant, you know, and bam, <laughs> bam, all of us felt it. Me, her, the client, she was like, she was looking for clients. We were looking for her and it happened in an unconventional, untraditional way. Just by thought, we attracted it and also by trusting the process. Um, another thing that I want to say about course correct is really trusting that once you say to yourself, I'm becoming joy, you allow yourself to become that. And there was another example that Caroline and I went through yesterday, and it's a really good example. And this one, I see it a lot in real life is uh, we were using the uh, GPS to navigate through the city because in Montreal, <laughs> whoever lives in Montreal, Montreal is like a city with yeah. closed streets, right? Closed streets and detours. And it's like, it, it's crazy. So I had everything on ways. I told Carolyn, listen, we just follow the ways. I'll put the address in, ways knows, you know? And we got to a stop sign on the street and Carolyn's like, I can't make a right. I said, well, Way says you can make a right. She's like, no, I'm so sure. I'm certain. I said, Carolyn, it says you can make a right. She's like, no, it's a one-way street. I said, Carolyn, it says you can make a right. Follow it. And then she saw that she could make a right. You see, she was so certain that she knew the way, that she knew the um, uh, that it was a two-way street. And then we realized that it was only two-way, like uh, as we were at the cross, it was two-way going left, but it wasn't, uh, it was not, it was one-way going left and two-way going right. And so she finally turned, took the turn. So that's what I'm trying to say, that you have to trust the process. And I'm like, Carolyn, we have to trust the GPS. Our mind works like a GPS. I always say it. Once you give your mind a picture, a destination, once you feed it the seed, your mind will show you the way trust it yeah trust That's it what get we out do. of we get way. in our own way yeah right? then we were laughing we were laughing and we said this is how life works you know but that's what's so fun and so playful about it, because when you're in these scenarios, like the law is, oh, Jenny asked a really good question, and I can address it here. Sure. Uh, she said, is there an order to the law? Do they follow one another? So is law of thinking number one? No. The laws are always working, all the time, interspersed with one another. It, it, they, you know, like, for example, in a book, he, they're just laying it out. Okay, the law, we're going to talk about law number one in chapter one. But there is no such order. Okay, the law of thinking. I mean, you just want to understand that your thoughts create your reality. That's what you want to understand. And following all these laws, first of all, understanding them, study them. Like, take the time to become so fluent, like a language, right? Because it's the language of success in your life. Understanding these laws is like learning a language. And you know, when you learn a new language, I remember when I was a kid, I was learning French, I would always think in English. 
right? I would always think in English and in my mind, I was always translating into, okay, what are, what, okay, what are those words in French? What are those words in French? Once you become fluent in a language, you don't do that anymore. You just switch from English to French. You don't have to think about it. It's just part of your life. It's part of your existence. That's how fluent you want to get with these laws. You want to learn them so that when you're, when you're on a street in the middle of construction, you understand how the law is actually applying right now. You, you recognize the laws as they show up. And, and I know with Pazit and I, when we have conversations, most often when we're navigating any subject, we'll say, well, you know, that's the law of this that's happening right now. You understand, right? So we, we're so fluent and you can become as fluent take this material, study the material, yeah. learn it, and then learn how to apply it. And when you start seeing these laws and your opportunity to now think your way through it, change the way you think, you'll see that life just flows. Yeah, and but you got to understand, right, I was going to say, but you do have to understand that everything does start with thought. So Jenny, like as you were saying, there's no particular orders because the, the, the laws work a little bit like a rainbow. They kind of like blend into one another. There's not like steps, but everything does start with, with thought. your thoughts. Everything does start with your thoughts. So, uh, you know, if you go a little bit in the example that we showed, uh, by thought, we understood that the Carolyn wanted assistance. So it was a thought. We made a decision. After our thought, we made a decision. A decision that this is what we need. This is what we want, you know? So it could be the same. I, de I decide that from this day on, I will, you know, I, I am happiness. I decide from this day on, I am wealthy, you know? So that is a decision, you know? And then you trust. Then you build that picture of you as your, you know, wealthy self, joyful self, and then you act congruent. Was it, what does your joyful self do? Well, she has fun, you know? I schedule fun time every single day. I, I put it on my schedule. Like I go to the gym every day, I schedule a fun time every day, I a fun activity. It doesn't matter what it is. Even going to, to a park and swinging on a swing, that's fun for me. Going swimming is fun for me. Going for a walk is fun for me. You, it's very important to keep yourself in a high vibe and, and to keep yourself congruent. And happiness is part of who I am, you know? It's part of who I am. So you become that by being congruent with that and then, and then matching it in your reality. So I'm just going to go on and finish up uh, just a few things I wanted to go through. So they say, it's so funny, success depends upon adopting a true course, upholding what is just and right in thought and action. So it comes back to your thoughts and action have to be congruent with one another. You can't be like, oh, okay, uh, I want to be in joy. And then you catch yourself. Uh, one of my clients, I would catch her uh, watching sad movies all the time. I'm like, why are you watching these sappy movies all the time? And I could see that her mind was more focused on sadness, although she wanted to be happy. I could see that's not where she was because the out picture told me exactly. The out picture is feedback. It just tells me where you are. It's like when you're on a map, you look at the map and you're like, oh shit, I'm off, the, I'm off track. <laughs> I'm no longer going to New York. I, I, I'm, I'm going to Buffalo. So you just look at it and you're like, oh damn. So you course correct and you go back to New York if that's where you're going to. So uh, just replace New York with wealth, happiness, joy, uh, you know, relationship, whatever it is you want. Okay. The only remedy known for fear is understanding. When one understands that the universe is filled with the presence of God, there is nothing to fear. We hypnotize ourselves into a belief which incapacitate, incapacitates our power. Fear clouds our vision. So, so there's, sometimes there's fear when you're going between what you were taught and these laws. Because these laws are universal, but we were not taught to go by universal laws. We were taught to go by man-made laws. So there's fear when you're in transition because you're like, which one is real? You know, which one is real? Is this real? Is that real? I don't know, you know. Uh, but, but, but you'll know what is real by practicing these laws. And when you see that what you think you become, you'll understand very quickly how real your thoughts have become. And then you understand that this is your reality. And then you decide what, you know, which, which, which laws you're operating with. You can't operate with both laws. You've got to operate with universal laws and make a decision. It's a decision that I'm going to operate with universal laws. So expand to enlarge a man's vision, whereas practical irreligious man is cramped by narrow and limited view. Okay. The only safeguard is to feel and to know that God is law and God is our supply and to affirm it constantly. You have to affirm it constantly. How did you learn things? By repetition. It was repeated to you. How did you learn your name? Your parents called you, right? How many times, a million times they called you your name until you're like, oh, okay, now I understand that when they say, Hazit, I respond, you know? I understood that that's my name. Everything is done by repetition. So repeat. 
that you know your supply uh, for an affirmative content comes to you from universe or God or source, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same. If we desire success, we must think success, we must talk and act success, and we could do this more easily if we know that God, the law, God is actually what they call the law. So God and law is the same thing, is on our side. Half our failures are a result of our pulling up on our horses and checking them as they are about to leap into barrier. Half our failures then are what, that we pull in at the moment when we should let all of our forces out and have full vent and we make the leap. We jerk ourselves back into failure just when we could be riding on to victory. What does that mean? Mm. A lot of people will jump back into their old habitual ways. They're doing great. They're working with the laws, law, life is flowing. And then you're like, oh, I don't know about this. You put the brakes on and you jump back into your old habitual way. So that's, that's what's called pulling, you know, you're pulling out of the moment, you know? Uh, so instead of pulling out of the moment, you want to lean into it. Um, success is a matter of advancement by grade. No man can become success except by training. So guys, this is a training, you know, all these laws, we learn them and it's not something that's going to happen overnight, but by practicing in them every single day, we get really, really good at it. The real secret consists in moving forward. Mental attitude, which promotes this constant progress is the ruling factor in the art of success. Mental attitude. Men attitude is altitude is what I always say, right? If you can, if you shift your attitude, you will change your life. How do you shift your attitude? You shift your thoughts. Exactly. The, yeah. This law is, abs is an absolute law and its actions uh, as any law of science. The fact that you desire to succeed is evidence that you have the power to succeed. Otherwise, you would not have been urged or, to, or aspired to success. You cannot aspire to succeed unless you have the power to succeed. So that's really, that, that's a, a good thing to know. So you cannot aspire to succeed unless you have the power to succeed. So you know you have the power. Desire creates the power. Power inspires the mind of the individual. Success is the result of that inspira inspiration rightly applied. So now you understand that success is in your hands. Positive mental attitude comes to he can. He can, is a, uh, he can is a positive attitude and he can't is a negative attitude. And so the only difference between one who succeeds or fails is between the one who thinks he can versus the one who thinks he can't. I mean, that's what it comes down to, an apostrophe and a T, <laughs> you know, that, that determines the, uh, the, the direction of your life. Obstacles can be viewed from a higher point of view are invariably stepping stones to success. So everybody has obstacles. Don't think that there's no obstacles. As you reach a certain level, there's different obstacles. There's fear at every single uh, level of someone's journey. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, at first, sometimes you got to spend, uh, I always say sometimes, you know, uh, my, my first jump into success and into self-development, I had to spend like a thousand dollars and that was a bit tough. And then I spent more like five grand and then 10 grand. And every time I reached a higher level, I was more and more scared, you know? So, and as you make more money, you're going to make bigger decisions and decisions that, that demand uh, a bigger risk from you. You know, it's different when you're investing a thousand, now you're investing a hundred thousand. It's, you know, it's friggin' scary, but uh, you understand that every, um, when you reach a new height, you'll have new, you know, newer things that you're going to have to break through. So that never goes away, but because you're working with the laws and you have experience in them, you understand that, oh, it's all going to work out. It's no biggie anymore. You know, you understand that you're working with law. So you have that conviction and you have that strength uh, behind you. And you've went through it so many times and now you're, you know what to expect. There's no more gray zone. You, you already know what to expect. So in all circumstances, you are greater than the things that, and the conditions. If not actually, you are potentially. Whenever you aim at a certain of winning, aim high, aim well, and your mistakes will come few and far in between. Keep the I can attitude, affirm it. So affirm it every day, look in the mirror, say, I can, I can do this. I can get myself out of this. Uh, I can overcome this. Uh, this too shall pass, right? Make this a mental picture. Pass. That's this a great expression pass. to keep very close to you. Always, always. Just know that you're never, you're never there to stay down, that success is within you. And because you think of success, you have the power within you to achieve it. So that's very strong. Make a mental picture and hold in mind that which you are aspiring to achieve. Begin with a persistent effort to work towards that final goal. Life, after all, is just like a series of many steps. Each step may provide you with new problems, but as you meet each new problem, keep your eye fixed upon the top, your objective, your aim, your goal. I'm going to add your vision. Yeah. No matter how crude or how poor your first efforts may be, they are but the beginning. 
You may not compare yourself with another. Everyone has had to commence at some time at the very bottom. You cannot fail until you give up. I'm going to repeat this one. You <laughs> cannot fail until you give up. You can never fail if you never give up. Keep on trying. Each effort produces some results. Success, after all, is only the, connection, the collection of many good results. I think that's pretty much, uh, that pretty much states the law of success. So then they say success, then is summarized, is the way that we learn to use the two valuable things, ta our time and our thought. Knowledge alone is not success. It's the way we use the knowledge. So you can show up here every Sunday. We can teach you the knowledge. But if you don't apply it, if you're not changing your thoughts, if you're not practicing on what you're focusing on, this, uh, you will stay pretty much the same. So Guys, stay in the, you know, stay in the laws. Uh, these laws are not maybe if you will get it. It's not a, uh, it, it's a guarantee. These laws guarantee your success. So all you got to do is you got to spend the time uh, investing in them, investing in, 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 you know, in your thoughts, in, your, in, in showing up to these masterminds, in reminding yourself constantly and every day growing your awareness. And, uh, and life becomes really in harmony. I could tell you that life before these laws uh, was in chaos for me. Uh, I don't know about any of you, but for me, it was in chaos. And once I started understanding that everything comes from our mind and, you know, through my vision work as well, I understood it firsthand. Uh, I, I never thought the same again. Never thought the same again. Well, your, your, your life, you know, when people say, oh, my life is in chaos and it's unpredictable, right? Your life actually isn't unpredictable there are going to be things that you don't expect to show up, but there are always going to be lessons from those things. But if you want your life to be predictable and in harmony, you need to work with the laws because you can't have like, like the two are completely connected. So if you want your life to be more predictable, then you need to train yourself to think about the things that you want in your life. I think the, I think the biggest, the, you know, the, the boulder, uh, the, the stumbling block that people get caught up in is they just keep focusing on the unwanted. They spend so much time focusing on things that show up that they don't want and they don't, they don't want to have in their life. And then they think that by focusing on that, they're going to solve it. But you don't solve a problem by focusing on a problem. You, you find a solution you know, think about how you want it to be so that you get the ideas about how to solve it. And then the problem is no longer a problem. But the more you talk about it, the more you focus on it, the more you like spend as much energy as you put into that problem is the amount of energy you're going to get back in more problems. So understand that if something shows up and you determine it to be unwanted, not even a problem, so you don't want to talk about it, anything is a problem. It's neither good nor bad. It isn't anything. It just is. So something shows up and you go, oh, well, that's not really what I want. Okay, what do I want? So start imagining what you want instead and then give all that energy you would have given to that problem. Focus it on where you're going. Focus it on what you want and you'll see that that will, it'll just go away, yeah. right? It solves itself. Or you get the idea and go, how come I never thought of that before? Well, because you were thinking about the problem, not the solution. Right. So, so these laws are very comforting. Yeah. These laws yeah. are very comforting. And I think what we'll do, uh, Carolyn, because the law of success was really a big one. Yeah. Uh, let's open up the floor. If anybody would like to uh, share some stories on how they're working with the laws, uh, how since the beginning, I know uh, a lot of people have been with us with the mastermind for quite a while now, how they're shifting. Uh, have you noticed any uh, changes in your life by applying these laws? Are you more conscientious uh, when you're thinking? Are you more conscientious when things happen? Uh, are you using them to, uh, you know, course correct? So let's hear from some of you, or if you have anything you'd like to share, you need the power of the mastermind uh, to kind of help you navigate. This is your moment. Anybody? Anybody? Hello? Would anybody like to? Anybody like to share anything that they've? Yeah, I can't see everybody. Ex so experienced. Well, we don't have any takers at the moment. No. Oh, oh we yes, got Natalie. We Natalie. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. 
Good morning. Good morning, Natalie. So I'm, I'm going to go back into your, when you were talking about the first one about the obedience and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I know that Carolyn and Pazit, you guys talk a lot. And one of the things you talked about, it was not hanging on to things for very long. So earlier in the week I was outside and I'm so grateful that I live where I do because I have 20 acres of land around me. Mm -hmm. Because of that, I have a great big pool out in my yard that is used for the clothesline. So I went and wrapped my arms around it at one point and it got me thinking about things that we hold on to. Mm -hmm. And I thought, huh, isn't it interesting that, you know, you could wrap yourself arms around a pole and how long do you really want to do that? Cause it gets uncomfortable. And I immediately translated that into problems and thought to myself, when you, when I start thinking about a problem, it's like, how long do I want to hold on to this pole? How long do I want to be uncomfortable holding on to this pole? And so I thought that's kind of cool. So I opened up my arms and I get a lot of wind here. And what I did is I opened up my arms and all I thought about is just imagine letting go of the pole and having the wind blow into your life what you want. Problem's gone because you've let go of the pole. Now what's coming to you that you want in your life? Mm. So throughout the week, when anytime something's come up that just, I know it's not right. And I know I don't want to think about it. All I say to myself is how long do you want to hold on to that pole, Natalie? And then I, I just, like that. It's a go. great, it's a great analogy. It's a great example because we have to allow the things into our life that, that we really, really want. Right. And if you don't allow it, it's resistance and you're hanging on to the pole. Yeah. So it's a great way to break it down a great visual. So that's great. Absolutely. Always letting go of the familiar. You know, we always, you know, the thing is with life is we can always see what we're letting go of. We can always see what we're letting go of, but you can never see what you're, uh, you know, what's coming forward. And this is where a lot of uh, us get stuck. You know, uh, you might see, oh, well, I might have to give up this business or give up the relationship. And I know what that is, uh, but I can't see the future. So it's, it's a little scary, but no, but the future is always, you know, uh, the future is for you. It's for you to create. So now that you know that you have Your the power imagination. to create, yeah, you know exactly what you you know exactly what you can expect. So it's kind of fun. Thank you for sharing. That's a great analogy. I'll keep analogy. it in my mind. Yeah, go ahead, Jenny. Um, just earlier, Pazit, when you were uh, talking about you know needing to have someone to talk to or or whatever, uh, it just it brought back a very quick moment with Carolyn. I had a meeting with her Wednesday morning. And uh, I said, oh, I want to go here, but, you know, I probably won't be able to do it. Like, and it was the same thing. Like, she's like, do you know what you just did? Do you know? And I'm like, no, you just did this and you did it again. And, it did. and so it's, it's, it's true. I just wanted to say it's true. Like, you don't realize how quickly, like, like I, I would, I see the funny thing is I would totally be supportive of someone else and say, but you can do it just think positive. Like I, like, I know, like consciously, I'm like, just think positively. But it, it, when it comes to thinking positively for myself, it's a little more of a, I you, believe at this time it is more of a challenge. It's not. Right. You just have to know what you're doing. You just have to be aware of your habits. Like, uh, like see Carolyn caught you, but I can't do it. Right. So right away you just blocked your own good from coming, but now you're aware of it. So next time you're going to say, but you're going to say, whoa, 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 you know, you're going to hear my, you're going to hear my voice in the back of your head. Right. Yeah. I do. It's going to reframe you. <laughs> That's what awareness does. That's what awareness yeah. does. It, it makes you realize, oh, I do do that? Yeah. It, you know, because it's so natural for me. It's like, oh, I didn't realize I do that. But when somebody brings it to light, it's like, Oh, that yeah. happens. That happens with everybody. That that's not like those of us who study and hard. We're just we our, our awareness is there, and we we still have got. I've got Pazit. She's my she's my partner for all of for all things you know that are business and law related, and it happens often. We do that for one another. It's like oh, it's interesting. You were just saying that like that. Have you? How do you think about that? And then you go, oh wow. I do that in those circumstances. That's the, that's my go-to thought. Oh, now I know. That's that. Once you know, once you're aware, that's what coaches are for. It's like for athletes, you know, don't keep doing that because you're going to get that result or you're not going to get that result. So that's what, you know, that's because to, t to make you aware of it is, is, is that's the, first step. From the knowledge over to you so that you now know so that when you know better, you can do better. So that next time, like you just said, when you get that thought of saying, like, like canceling out yourself, you know, you just stop and course correct. You just change your thinking. And the more you do that, the more you create a new habit. 
So you won't go back to those old habits anymore. You may like stray into that territory every once in a while, like off-roading, you know, into the ditch. And then uh, you know what to do though, to get yourself yeah. out of there. Yeah. yeah. It's so. course, uh, these laws just teach you to course correct very fast. That's all. The only thing that we've gained uh, so much is obviously knowledge and awareness and speed. Speed because, you know, l l less detours. And then when things happen, I always understand they're not happening against me. They're always happening for, for me. me. They're always for me. So even when I'm being challenged, I'm like, oh, that's interesting, you know? And I say to myself, okay, let's play. I see life as a game. And I always say, okay, let's play. Let's play. I'm ready. Okay, bring this on, you know? And I start having fun with everything. And I think the moment that you infuse fun and joy into everything, um, things move very fast to you. That's, what I, that's been my experience. And uh, also... Uh, by interviewing many uh, different celebrities that are working with subjective reality, you know, which are working with the laws versus physical reality, they all say the same thing. You know, when they infuse joy and fun in their day, uh, things just work much easier. So we kind of like, okay, this is funny. You know, it happened to me. And you, you look for the good in it right away. There's always yeah. good in everything. And understand that you can change anything by your thoughts. That's right. So um, I'm going to put a link into the chat because uh, for the month of July, for those who, and we hope we all do, want to even get more clarity on the laws based on where they really originated from, which is in a text called the Kabbalion, which, which, was, uh, which is 4,000 years old, uh, a text that we break down into seven principles. And you'll recognize what's so great is that, you know, your belief in universal law will be heightened because you'll see now where the origins of all the laws that we've just studied, where they come from, and you'll see that where the principles are really drawn from, and then we, we really kind of get, get into, the, into the original state of the text and teaching you even more ways to create the life that you want by the thoughts that you think. So we, um, we do 7 a.m. club for the month of July. We did this in the month of May also. We start next Sunday for the four Sundays in July. And the 7 a.m. club becomes the study of the Kabbalion for the month of July. So I've put the link to register in the chat. It's at 7 a.m. It's seven principles. It's $7 for the month. So when you register, you'll be sent the text the whole Kabbalion text and this really fantastic summary that uh, Pazit created to really kind of just highlight them. And then every Sunday we'll go into a lot more detail with you. And we love the Kabbalion text. I love the Kabbalion. They say the Kabbalion only comes into people's life when they're ready for it. Okay. So uh, the, the Kabbalion came into my life like three times. It kind of came knocking on my door. And on the third time I listened, I'm knocking happy I listened because the, um, it really changed. Uh, although I, I was working with, with the laws, the the principles in the Kabbalion helped me understand how to shift and how to keep things in a certain way. Like you know, um, there's different principles that I was not applying, and so it really helped me fine tune. So when you understand that your reality is created by your thoughts. I don't think that there's a school that should go without teaching this principle. I was wondering why we never uh, taught these principles. And what they say is that these principles were so guarded and so secret because they don't want these principles to, to land in the hands of the wrong doers because they are so powerful. This is how you really start controlling your life. You understand, you know, how, how life rhythm works and the swing of things and pendulums. And it's such, it's so key. And even if you've done it before, I'm always in the Kabbalah and I always study it every single day. Uh, even if you've done it before today, when you will take it on again, you will take it from a, a more aware and a new different perspective. So stay in the study. It's $7. We made it so easy peasy for all of you to, uh, to take it uh, and to stay in the study. And uh, we hope to see you there. And these have actually helped really fine tune uh, my life in terms of there was a few principles in there that were very, very necessary for taking my life to going even into a higher level. And so as part of the mastermind, we are only here to take you higher and higher. We are here as your guides, as you know, we're here to navigate you, uh, towards success. And we're here to teach you, uh, everything that we learned. It is our uh, duty to teach you so you can, you know, so, so, so you can reach a life of fulfillment uh, in every area and of wealth in every single area. Yeah, and to show you that you, you, you have control over all of it because you're working in your own mind. And your mind is your? 
workshop. Your, your mind is your workshop. You are the creator of your reality. Do not ever doubt it. We are here. This is why we formed this group because we were looking for support. You know, when you start thinking in a different way, there's not many people like us that think like us. And so you feel alone and sometimes you, you're going to doubt yourself and you're not going to read your, your biggest capacity in life just because you don't have these kind of groups and these kind of people you can throw your ideas, you know? Uh, so, uh, so we created this, this safe space uh, for all of us so you, you can know for sure that you are the creator of your reality. The world is your playground and everything starts in here. Everything starts in here. You do create your reality. I create my reality every day. Carolyn does. And so do you. You create it. Whether you are aware of it or not, you are creating it. So if you are creating it, you want to make sure that you know <laughs> what, the laws are, what the laws are and how to play the game of life. You know, that it's, really, it's really interesting. I had this week, I had to launch an expansion of my company. And somebody said to me at the launch, they said, oh, what a surprise. This is like, wow, I just, you know, didn't expect this. And I said, well, I did. <laughs> <laughs> because it was my vision. It's what I decided I wanted. It's what I pictured for myself. So it just caught up to me. That was it. It was like, okay, next, let's just keep the vision going. You know, it just, it, you will achieve whatever it is you want to achieve. First, you've got to decide what it is, focus on it. Anything else is just like, yeah, okay, go away. That's not important. It's not, is this thinking going to get me what I want or is it going to get me more of what I don't want and as soon as you know the answer just repel it's gone forget about it don't right. focus on it anymore yes yeah. Jenny um I just want to add to because we had not this conversation but we had a similar line of, of thought on Wednesday and I think uh, well for people similar to me in their thought patterns like you know when we hear things we hear oh focus on what you want and and that and so I think very literally and very singularly, and you had said to me, it's okay, you can have A, B, and C, and they can all be amazing things. You can have, like, so you're like, well, focus on them. So sometimes I think for people like me, you got to, because then I'm like, okay, well, so I can be a writer, but I can't do this, and I can, you know what I mean? So it's, it's just, I don't know if anyone else thinks like me, but it's, it's just that, like, when you said to me, like, of course you can still be a DSW and be a writer and do Jenny Q time. You, you, you can do it all, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, no, but there's only so much time. Yeah, but can I, can I add something? Just sure. a, a mindset think with the, but we're so trained to go, here is the good, but this is the bad that's right now. Or, you know, like, it's like, I want to do this, but I don't have the money. So I've been trying to shift my focus to, I don't have the money, but I want to do this. And then, so I, I put the, you know, do you want the bad first or the good first? Well, I want the bad first so I can go, but because when we say, but we negate the good that we just said. So I want to switch it to, I want to put the bad first or the the problem first or the challenge and go, but I can overcome this, but I can get the money, but I have, and then so switch it to, well, I don't have the money, but I want to do this, or I don't have the knowledge, but I want to do that because we're shifting our focus to now, how do I get the money? How do I, we don't always have to think of the how, but you, you don't want, you, the how is not your work. So I have a suggestion for you, Wendy. So, but it's not that, it's just, I know that I can get there is what yeah. I'm saying. Like, like it's, yeah, the how isn't, we're not supposed to focus on the how to get you, it. You don't the need to, but, he, but here's my suggestion when you're saying, you know, and good that you're, you're switching it up, but how about you don't even acknowledge that anything is a problem and you just I'm saying focus, when we just focus when on, we just focus. say to yourself, this is what I want. Not yeah. that, you know, like, like even take out that I don't have the money but I want to do this, or I want to do this, but I don't have the money, whatever, or just take out, but I don't have the money. But I think that's well, that's what I'm saying is, is just switch it so that your mind starts focusing on the, what you want instead of, yeah. you know, All you want to do. what we naturally do and go, I want to do this, but I don't have the money or, but yeah. I don't have the skills or, but I, so just, I would it. just, uh, in my suggestion, uh, Wendy, like I totally understand what you say, but just because uh, we want to make sure that everybody, because everybody's learning as well. So we want to yeah, make sure exactly. people correct things. 
Um, you know, by saying I don't have the money, that is a limitation. You yeah. might not see it right now, but, uh, but, <laughs> but it is a limitation. It is a limitation. Yeah. So we, so we're just going to bring it to light. So, uh, but I love uh, one thing that you absolutely said is that how can I have the money? Okay. So how can I, uh, you know, you could be creative. How can I create it? Or, you know, what are some ideas of, of things I can do? You know, um, kind of take it, take it into that kind of rude word opens, uh, it opens the mind for you and always see yourself as wealthy. If you want to have money, you can't be like, well, I don't have the money that right there. It, it takes away wealth from you. So you don't want to do that. You want to be like, okay. What do I want? Let's have fun. Well, I'm saying if you're in that that lack mindset or whatever, yeah. take it as a, but I'm going to get there. But like, just take yourself, if you're in that mindset, right, where you're going to say the sentence, I want to do this, but, uh, so it, I'm just saying, just flip How it. I do so that? That if you're already in that negative or lack or whatever, switch it to a, but if I can, that um, doesn't matter because I'm going to do this anyway. Right. Course correct. Course correct. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah can, exactly. Sorry. I just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, like, course correct. Yeah. Course correct. I got, 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 we got it. We got it. It's all good. We just yeah. want to make sure because everybody's learning. So we want to make sure everybody's learning. Uh, and understands know. that. Yeah. Right. If I can um, just jump in. Um, Wendy, that was lovely, by the way. <laughs> I, just listening to it, it like, I understand exactly what I, I, I cognitively I understand everything. Um, so I think the way I look at it now, because Wendy, I really do love what you just said. It's like training wheels, right? Like you're not going to send someone on two wheels until they're comfortable with the four, and then they take the little ones away. And if you're aware that the inverting the butt is like they're just little training wheels, and then eventually you don't need the butt, right? So look at it kind of that way. So thank you for the training wheels, Wendy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, so I think on, uh, on this, we're going to wish everybody a uh, happy uh, Sunday. It's actually a long weekend. So Canada Day for everybody. Time to have fun. Time to, you know, just, you know, just monitor your thoughts. That's the most important thing. And just monitor them in the direction that you want to take. And that's, a, you know, wh whichever way works for you is fantastic. But you, you know, just, you know, just take yourself to where you want to go. That's, the, you know, that, that's where we're here. Take yourself higher. So on that note, we're going to close the mastermind where we want to thank every single one of you for waking up and showing up. We command you. We love having all of you and we love listening to you and your feedback and how your lives are changing uh, as a progression of studying this. This is the most important. And um, we're, we're looking forward to all seeing you with the Kabbalion next, uh, next, next Sunday. Sunday. And all the recordings for the month of June will go out today. So you'll get an email. You'll have the recordings. And what I'll do, I, I had sent out the text way at the beginning for people. But I'm going to, I'll just re-add it to the email with the recordings so that you have a, a fresh version of the, of the text that we're studying. So, and in, in there, I'll put the link as well for the Kabbalion. So you can register and join us here next Sunday as we get started with that text, which uh, you're going to love as we do. Absolutely. So it's all love. So guys, go play. Remember, you are the creators of your world. Your mind is your workshop. The world is your playground and you get to choose what you get. So have fun and enjoy your week. And we're looking forward to seeing you all on next Sunday. Have a good one, guys. Have a great week, everybody. Absolutely. Bye. Bye for now.